Hi, this is Adean. Today I'm having a look at the Transformers Fall of Cybertron Sound Blaster figure. So Sound Blaster comes in this kind of box. It's got a nice artwork on the front and in itself it's a nice collectible box. I won't be getting a second Sound Blaster but I do have two Sound Waves on the way. So one of those will be going to mint in sealed box. Uh, what I really like, where is it, here we go, is that on the edge we get an idea of what's to come with our Rumble and Ratbat, Ravage and Frenzy graphics here. So I'm really looking forward to getting those guys. I always love the cassettes. On the back of the box we've got a photoshopped graphic. Sound Blaster, restored to a fully functioning state by the loyalty of his minions like the use of minions, and the arcane science of an alien world, Soundwave takes a new name to reflect his new lease on life, no longer content to simply manage electronic warfare for the Decepticons. He charges into battle against the Autobots, using devastating sonic attacks to disable and disorient his enemies so that his minions can finish them off. Let's have a look at the toy. So, Sound Blaster. The first thing I notice in looking at Sound Blaster is that unlike the other Generations toys this year that we've got, the Voyager size has stayed pretty much the same as it always was in height and apparent weight, although not actual weight. So having a look at him next to a classic slash Generations Inferno, you can see that he's just about the same size. And I'm really thankful to Hasbro for maintaining that size. Although, as I mentioned, the weight is it is a little bit hollow, but the design doesn't show it. So, um, let's have a close-up of this face. So, looking at the face, you can see it's a pretty good G1 likeness of Sound Blaster. And the only complaints that I've got with that face are that re there really should be some paint on the crest, I feel and that it does, in person it looks a little bit spongy so it's not as crisp I, I don't know why the toys these days are becoming um, that spongy sculpt kind of appearance maybe it's the cheaper plastic that they're using it definitely is a cheaper plastic I mean it, it feels really cheap in comparison to older toys um, we just have to come to expect that now, but I wish that we could get crisp details in this plastic, something it doesn't seem capable of doing. While we're on the topic of the plastic, you can see that in the front we have a see-through section here. So this little panel is movable, and if I hold it up like that you can see right through it, and you can see that a nice crisp Decepticon logo is printed on that. So we do have some paint on the figure, I mentioned that I would have liked to seen, have seen a little bit of paint on the crest, but we do have yellow and grey paint on this section of the arm, and on the same piece, gold. So on this one piece of grey plastic, we have three separate colours. A little bit of overspray there. But um, it surprises me that technically they're prepared to paint three different overlays on one piece of the mould. I thought that would have ended up costing them more money but uh, I guess they know what they're doing. Looking at the wheels on the side here, you can see that there is also paint over the clear plastic section. So that paint isn't really applied properly on this figure, and I don't know if it picks up here, if I can just focus. No, it's not really picking up, but it's, it's roughly sprayed. So this, this grey isn't solid in some places on this wheel. It can... Uh, it looks like there's a bit of spatter, but uh, it's a bit too fine to be seen here. On the back, we have this little chair area painted in red, and it seems that the only two places on the figure that that colour is used is on the chair and on the barrel of this gun. I'm surprised they went to the trouble to do that. As far as articulation is concerned, Soundwave has, uh, sorry, Sound Blaster has a full 360 on the shoulder here. The shoulder can go up and down, and due to the transformation we have a bit of 
shrug here. In the box, he comes packaged like this, so it doesn't look quite as good as it could. But once you put it up like that, you get the movement in the right location. There is a swivel at the bicep, and then this other swinging joint just under the shoulder. The bicep has a ratcheted, nice clicky ratcheted elbow. The wrist can pivot in and out like that, mainly due to transformation, but it also has a swivel, so it's really got a perfect arm. And um, I wonder how much of that was just because they needed it for transformation, and how much of that was because they listen to what people want because you know nobody likes the dumbbell bicep curling arms where you can't rotate the wrist so I'm happy that the wrist can rotate we've got no waist rotation mainly due to probably the gimmick that's in here we have a backwards and forwards swing on the hip in and out swing no ratchets they're just friction there's a swivel at the thigh and ratcheted knee. The range of motion we get on the knee is only 90 degrees, but it seems pretty good. Looking at the foot, we have the foot being able to swivel all the way back like that. The foot is quite big and solid, and this figure, like I can just plop him down and he'll stand up. quite stable. It's one of the most stable toys from Hasbro that I've bought in a long time. The original uh, War for Cybertron toy had big feet as well, but due to the sort of flimsy nature of his ankles, was not quite as stable, depending on how stiff your copy is. I guess now that we have both these figures out, we should take a look at scale. So this War for Cybertron sound wave is pretty much in scale with the other figures that go along in the line, all the other deluxes. And if scale is important to you, then Sound Blaster slash Sound Wave is going to be way too big because he towers over almost everyone. For me, it's not that big a deal. Um, I've got plenty of figures to display this guy with, but you can see that there is a massive size difference. Uh, putting him aside, Looking at one of the other good versions of Soundwave, uh, Music Label, I think that's what it is, Music, yep. Again, much bigger than that. So this is one of the biggest Soundwaves we've got. Um, he's actually about as tall as a G1 Soundwave, just looks a lot more modern. Now here's uh, Perfect Effect Frenzy, I don't know what his number is. So I think that these Perfect Effect guys scale really well and in a minute when I pop out the minion the buzzsaw minion from Sound Blaster you're going to see that they're pretty similar in size uh, who else have we got here so here we go here he is next to Bruticus so a little bit higher than the waist on Bruticus probably too big to scale with him as well so Soundwave has been jacked up in size really to enable his cool feature and that's put him out of scale with everyone else but doesn't upset me I'm happy to have the feature speaking of the feature here it is so just like with G1 if you pop down this his flap will open up this gold disc in here is Buzzsaw, so he, he actually is pretty stiff to get in here. Once he's in, the idea is that using this little ram at the back, you can jack him out like that. I find it quite difficult to pop out, and you'll see that the disc survived that impact, when in theory it shouldn't be able to do that. Looking at the back of the disc, you can see a little button down here that's supposed to get hit when he's ejected and cause the transformation to happen or at least when it hits the floor but um, I found that it doesn't really happen that much and putting it back in is not as easy as it would sound so get that out of the way you can see that there's a big cavity in there you can fit a few of these guys in but it's pretty stiff you've got to fit it perfectly straight otherwise 
it's not going to want to go in. I find if I get it just a little bit and then use this flap to make it go in more, that's the best way to do it. Once it's in that far, if you sort of, there you go, you can get it right to the back like that. And um, when it's right back, that's the best hope of ejecting it. So look at that, that didn't come out. So it's, it's, it's shaping up to be a bit of an annoyance actually. It didn't come out. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit it really hard this time. It didn't come out. Okay, maybe if I pull his bits and pieces out of the way of this ram and then give it another hit. Here we go. There we go. Came out. So maybe it's these things getting in the way and absorbing the force from that ram which is causing it to not come out. I don't know. Maybe a bit of, in a bit of time I'll get more used to it and be able to do it better. So that time, Buzzsaw, uh, this is how we ended up, partially transformed. I'm going to drop it and see what happens. There we go. That's what's meant to happen. So if you see then, I hit the button and out comes the wings and the head. Get some focus on this. There we go, have, I don't know what Buzz Saw is supposed to be, a vulture or an eagle? So, he's a little bit lacking in paint. If his eyes had been painted, there we go, if his eyes had been painted, it would have been better. So I, I think I'm going to get some little stickers or some red or gold paint or something just to paint eyes on him because without eyes, it makes it a little bit ambiguous as to what he's supposed to be. I'm not a big fan of these big circular regions, but uh, I understand it was kind of to fit with the gimmick of being a cylinder inside the chest, so uh, I can deal with that. I'm interested to see how they'll incorporate the auto transformation in the other figures. Um, I think I like this. I would collect these as many as many different kinds of discs as they make. I'm going to buy. Uh, it's, it's simple, but you know, going back to the roots of the character's design. That's why he had these in the first place, so that people could collect them. I like that. To get it back into the disc mode, all you got to do is fold the head and let the wings sort of rotate with it. And do that. And there you go. Disc mode. The gun on the top of Sound Blaster here also pops off, but it is just hollow and does nothing. It has no interaction with the disc figure, and for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, there is a metal pin inside the handle. Maybe the plastic was breaking off too much and they needed to strengthen it. Uh, the gun also can be held in Sound in Sound Blaster, sorry, in Sound Blaster's hand, like that. But I prefer it on the shoulder, where it's always meant to have been. Now let's see how he transforms. So the transformation is really close to the previous Deluxe. So first we're going to pop off this gun, fold the hands just back a bit into the cavities. I'm going to extend this out the back, rotate the wheels into the upright position, just loosen this gizmo at the front, put the arms down into this position and open the little doors. So next, I'm going to get them at just the right height so that they cover his head like that. Bend the wheel forward and rotate the elbow to close the arm like that. Do the same to the other side. Oh, and by the way, there's a, a peg. When I say just the right height, I mean to get this peg into the hole. that, close it. Now these doors at the front will peg together also like this. 
this little bit flops down a lot. I don't know. It's not too secure. Um, the instructions actually end up showing it in the flop down position, but I think that it's meant to go forward like this. So fold this front, bend the arm, move this joint until it's like this, and I find best to push it right forward for the rest of the transformation until you're ready to move it back. Pop the tab in the waist to swing this bar up like this, bend the feet till they're pointing up, just rotate this over. You can see that these little these little bits here go inside the feet and then the whole thing just sort of snaps together like that. Then you can slide the panel backwards, give it a good squeeze just to make it all right and pop the gun back on the top. And there we go. So, I mean, the, the wheels are a little bit rattly just because they've got no um, axles. Really, they're, they're kind of a, a tab that pops into a, two cylinders. One cylinder tab pops into another cylinder. Because of that, it's not really that great a roll. But it is pretty freely moving. So, sounds bad, but rolls kind of okay. Putting him there, you can see that compared to the Soundwave toy from Wolf Cybertron, he's really, again, much bigger. There isn't much mass shifting going on with Soundwave. He's big in robot mode and he's big in vehicle mode. So I'm guessing later on when we get one of these minions it mentions, he's going to be able to sit approximately here, although this seat is kind of tiny. I don't think he's going to look that great sitting on top. Uh, one of these guys can fill the bill for the time being, and they've got so much posability that he could fit in that seat. Now, one last thing, I bought this for $50. You may not realize I am in Australia. Only a maniac buys the majority of their toys at local retail in Australia. This Soundwave version of this is on pre-order at BBTS for $24, I think. I have two of those coming from there. I was in the shop today. I was looking around. I saw the sightings thread at Transformers World 2005, and they said this guy was at Target. I dropped into Target. He was there. Couldn't help myself. Um, it's not very often that I buy something locally, so I just jumped on these $50. I feel bad. I got a bit of remorse, to be honest, paying $50. For this Voyager, but I'm happy with the figure, so anyway, I'm glad I've got it, even though it was a bit of a ripoff. Uh, that's it, this has been Odean. Thanks for watching my video review of Fall of Cybertron Voyager Class Sound Blaster. <laughs>